Hi everyone, a very happy new year 2024. Welcome to my first video of the year and I'm going to start with another episode of my series Revisiting where I look back on one particular album uh, which I'm very fond of. This one, the Madness album The Rise and Fall, is an album which is indelibly printed into my mind and associated with the month of January, really. Uh, I got this album uh, for Christmas in 1982. I got it the same Christmas day as I got Hot Space by Queen, uh, so those two records to get on the same Christmas morning. And uh, I was 11 years old at the time and I'd just gone up to secondary school. So uh, I'd moved from a small primary school uh, to quite a big secondary school and was just learning the ropes of that really, just getting used to a very different environment and it was exciting and it was a bit scary, making new friends and just trying to come to terms with this uh, step into the unknown really. And this record, whenever I hear it now, it takes me straight back to those times and it was quite a good record to get really um, for that particular transition and uh, I'll talk about that a bit more as we get into it. So um, Madness, obviously, the original Nutty Boys uh, from Camden in North London. Uh, they come onto the scene really as a ska band as part of, as part of the two-tone movement. You can see on the earlier album there, One Step Beyond, they had this wacky, nutty image. I remember at school, you know, all the cool kids were into Madness, all the lads were into Madness. They were quite a laddie band, really. And um, what's interesting is that they'd they'd come along with these very sort of jaunty, scar-inflected songs, and that's what people loved about them. Songs like Baggy Trousers and, uh, you know, those kind of very upbeat, musical inflected with ska kind of pop tunes but um, The Rise and Fall which was their fourth album really was a very experimental album it was not really much like anything they'd done before and um, I don't remember talking to any other friends at school about this record when it came out I know people had it I know other kids in my class had got it but um, apart from the huge hit single Our House the record really, it doesn't really tick too many of the classic Madness boxes. For a start, there's hardly any scar on the record at all. In fact, I'm struggling to think of any song on the album which has a scar flavour. You've still got the brass and the horns in there, but there's no particular scar rhythms. Most of the songs are very introverted, very melancholy. The lyrics are quite complex and um, the tunes are, they are poppy, but not poppy in a way that Madness had been before. I think essentially it was an experimental album and I think it's one which has come to be quite highly regarded um, in retrospect. So let's have a quick look at the artwork first of all. So uh, a great um, moody black and white shot of the boys. Uh, now I did do some research so I can tell you exactly where this... Um, where this shot was taken, it was just west of Camden Town at the Primrose Hill viewpoint. And you can see on the horizon, if you look very carefully here, you can see the BT Tower there in the distance. And uh, a really great cover. You've got a variety of things going on there. You've got the Snake Charmer. Uh, you've got Graham Suggs McPherson reading the newspaper. And... Um, <laughs> I used to have one of those helmets, those MP military police helmets. Uh, the tall mirror there, it's just, uh, I don't know, just a really evocative cover. And then the inside gate filled is great fun as well. And you've got the band on stage in some kind of old creepy um, theatre. It looks almost like a kind of peep show style theatre. You've got this sort of elderly audience sat there, you know, the back of this guy's balding head. Um, there's just something very British, quintessentially British, even English, um, about the artwork and the packaging. Um, inside the record uh, comes in just a very normal black um, inner uh, which is extremely crumpled with age my copy and then the artwork on the labels actually is really nice it's not uh, side one and side two it's stage one and stage two uh, so you've got uh, stage one has the color label uh, from the album uh, jacket and stage two has the interior shot and it's quite good because they're reversed in terms of them being colour. So the, the the black and white shot from the album cover is in colour on the label um, and vice versa. So let's just do a quick little bit of history on the record before I get into the music. Um, 
as I said, this was the fourth studio album by Madness. came out on the 8th of October 1982. I went to secondary school in the September of 82, so the things were very closely related. On Stiff Records, of course, which was the label that Madness had been on. And uh, the producers, again, were Clive Langer and Alan Wynne Stanley, you know, who'd worked with them before. And I guess their sound their sound was qu- quite, um, quite representative of the era, really. You know, they worked with Elvis Costello... Um, later on they did Voice of the Beehive they were quite an influential pair good pop producers definitely pop producers Um, they found a way of recording that was quite standardised in a way there was nothing flashy or spectacular about their productions but they were always very effective Um, this record interestingly was never released in the US despite boasting the hit single um, almost said Hourglass then (laughs) the hit single Our House which was uh, the band's only top 10 hit in the States. So not quite sure what happened there. Maybe there was a distribution problem. But um, yeah, it it didn't get a US release. Um, But it did do well in the UK. It it was a hit album. And um, Our House, the huge hit single from it, you know, gave it a lot of traction. Um, I guess we could just quickly talk about Our House before we get into some of the lesser known tracks. Just one of the great, great British hit singles, possibly my favourite British hit single of all time. It would certainly be top five. It's a song that was later immortalised on the Young Ones episode, Sick, uh, which I think was in 84, where the band are seen um, miming it in the street with a a street riot going on around them. Um, You know, again, that is very evocative of the era that it came from. And uh, I just love the lyrics on this song. In fact, this this album is brilliant lyrically all the way through. You've got this verse here. Father wears his Sunday best. Mother's tired. She needs a rest. The kids are playing up downstairs. Sister's sighing in her sleep. Brother's got a date to keep. He can't hang around. There's such a great sense of life being lived in that song. It's a kind of kitchen sink, kinks style song really with the touches of musical one of my favorite musical moments of all time is on this song it's right at the beginning where the bass player plays a little bass riff which sounds like a motorbike revving up it's just brilliant they were great arrangers great musicians i think in their way a different kind of band but i think they were as great as the police were really you know they were virtuosos they could just uh, handle any arrangement and you know any arrangement idea Just do a quick run through of the musicians, actually, uh, because we need to um, give them some some time in the spotlight here. Graham Suggs McPherson, obviously, on vocals. Mike Barson, brilliant keyboard player. He does wonderful tinkling piano runs all the way through this album. Sounds like a tack piano, you know, one of those pianos that has little tacks on the hammers. I'm not sure if it is or not, but um, he plays stuff which sounds like it's it's got touches of musical, touches of pub style, sing-along piano, but he does jazzy runs as well. He's just brilliant. Chris Foreman on guitars, Lee Thompson on sax, wonderful sax player, Daniel Woodgate on drums, Mark Bedford on bass, he's the guy that does the uh, the motorbike engine revving at the start of our house, and then Chaz Smith or Cathal Smith who does um, backing vocals, and he was, I think he was the dancer in the band as well, and he sings, he sings lead vocal on one track on this record. Also, quick mention to um, David Bedford, the uh, classic British string arranger who does absolutely wonderful brass and string arrangements on this record, including on Our House, who does an absolutely wonderful um, string arrangements on that song. And I guess Our House is one of those songs which has just passed into British culture, really. It was a West End musical in 2002, um, scored big on the charts at the time of its release in 82, got to number five in the singles charts, number seven in the US. And uh, it is now the Aston Villa anthem on the football terraces of this country. Um, easily the poppiest moment on the record. Um, it's po- it's really the song that sounds most like classic madness. The rest of the album doesn't really follow suit. I mean, starting from the opening track, which is the title track, The Rise and Fall, as I said before, it's got a very... Um, melancholy sound there's something very clever about this record in the way that to me it evokes it evokes the era that it comes from very precisely you know early 80s britain thatcher had just come to power and there's just this kind of sense of british society trying to get along with things living their lives but with this 
impending shadow on the horizon. And when I listen to it now, uh, it does it does really evoke that era. And it sounds like it was composed with that in mind, really, musically and lyrically. It sounds like a record that was purpose built to be listened to in 20, 30 years time in order to give listeners a kind of snapshot of what life was like in England at the time, early 80s. Things were going to get a lot worse, obviously, but um, yeah, very interesting, a very interesting kind of aesthetic at work um, on the record. Not quite sure how they did it, a bit of a conjuring trick, really. But the opening track, The Rise and Fall, these are the streets I used to walk on summer nights, sit out and talk. That's the house where I used to live. I remember what I would give. That sense of walking around a town where you used to live and looking around at the houses, you know, that plugs into the Our House song as well, you know, pointing at your old house and going, that's the house we used to live. Being here again, I can recall forgotten moments, the rise and fall. We used to live where children play. They leave their homes a mile away to come and stand in trees and grass where we once walked, the memories last. That reference to trees and grass, that really evokes... Uh, certain associations for me you know my home village where I grew up there are fields and places there where I used to you know make dens in trees and bushes which have now gone you know there's housing estates built over them and I walk around there now and I do look around and I you know I see certain houses where my friends used to live and just you know the the music on this album taps into that I guess it's a kind of aesthetic which goes back to bands like the Kinks, you know, Ray Davis. He is he also had this magical way of evoking the past, not in a way which is sentimental, but which is definitely shot through with an awful lot of pathos. Tomorrow's Just Another Day, which is another it's kind of interesting song. It's sort of jaunty, but it's also sad sounding. Trying hard, I thought I'd done my best. All my life, I can't get no rest. The person who comes across in most of these songs is is it's unhappy in some way. They're rueful, they're reflecting on times gone by. My favourite couplet on the record comes from this song. I need a moment to reflect on the friendships I have wrecked. There's almost something Roger Watersy about that, I think. Three Cheers for the Blue Skinned Beast actually was a bit of a comment on the Falklands War. Uh, and, um, you know, I don't think Madness were too fond of, uh, of Margaret Thatcher or the Conservative Party. And again, it, the song has got a kind of a jaunty feel, but a, 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 there's a bit of anger running through it. I can fly you to your loved ones, but I can promise no return to a shell shocked, God forsaken, where their craters still they burn. It's a long way away from the world of baggy trousers and my girl. Um, there's a certain degree of lyrical angst coming through in these songs and because the music is not, it's not exactly sort of jolly, nutty ska, it does give a very different feel to the tracks. The classic Madness sound is still there, you've still got the brass, you've still got the piano. Touches of Exotica coming through as well. On side two you have the Mike Barson song New Delhi, which is a very dreamlike song. I think it's about a guy who's basically hallucinating that he's in India and you know there are sitars on that song and strange oriental atmospheres coming through. They were sort of pushing at the boundaries, I think, of, of what was expected from Madness and um, and doing you know things that were quite experimental. Primrose Hill is another favourite of mine. This one is just a guy looking through the window, really, and looking out at the park. A man opened his window and stared at Primrose Hill, out there enjoying themselves. I've seen them from this sill. Green splashed with white and red going brown. Children baiting animals, running up and down. I stare out of this window, see the world go past. I've read and looked at everything. I know it off by heart. You know, a sense of isolation there, or a sense of somebody feeling detached from reality. On side two, there's a great song called um, Tiptoes, which I've always, I've always seen it as a song about a guy committing suicide, but um, I've seen other interpretations of the song um, in the song, he, he climbs up a tall building and um, it's, it's not quite clear from the song whether he just wants to gain some kind of perspective on life or whether he's going to throw himself off. I think he does throw himself off in the end. He tries to fly, essentially. But the album ends in fine style with the song Madness Is All In The Mind, which is sung by Chaz Smith. And that one is uh, it's kind of a, a bit of a jazzy um, cocktail bar style song with some quite funny lyrics all about madness being all in the mind. It's a front-loaded album. Side one is consistently excellent and then on side two you've got you've got Our House obviously which is the monster hit, Tiptoes which is a great track and New, and New Delhi which is which is which is quite good fun. 
Um, apart from Our House, the only other single from this record was Tomorrow Is Just Another Day, which was a double A side actually with Madness It's All In The Mind, um, which was by Mike Barson. Uh, it peaked at number eight in February of 83. And I didn't know this actually, there's a version uh, on the 12 inch, there's a slower blues style version, a song by Elvis Costello, which later turned up on um, on a bonus track on the 2004 reissue of Goodbye Cruel World. So uh, yes, I must check that out. So anyway, yeah, Madness, The Rise and Fall, an album which always evokes January and I do always dig it out. I was just putting the Christmas tree down just now and I was streaming the album while I was doing it and it seems such a, such a, an appropriate album to be listening to, you know, taking down the Christmas tree, um, you know, a load in the house here, everybody's out and I'm just there taking the baubles down and um, and listening to this album which in some ways is, is quite... Um, it's it's quite it's quite dour in places. It has that British Ray Davis thing going on. I'd be interested to know what other people think of it because I don't really hear people talking about it really. Madness tend to come up as one of those groups, you know, like a greatest hits group uh, because they had such a fantastic run of hit singles. Um, but um, you know, they were an albums band as well, and they're still going strong now, of course. Okay, that will do for now. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy New Year again. Take care. Bye.